This is Jordan Peterson on the left and a guy named Eric Metaxas on the right. If you don't know Eric Metaxas, I just about guarantee your grandfather does. He is a very well-known radio host. I think he broadcasts from the Empire State Building or something like that. Two hours every day. And he's a right-wing propagandist for all intents and purposes. He spreads the, the most insane right-wing propaganda. Well, his whole thing is we live in Nazi Germany right now in America. America is made up of Nazis. And we have to fight the Nazi scourge that is coming after us right now. As pastors, as patriots, as whoever, we need to fight the Nazi scourge. And who are the Nazis? Trans people. I'm not even joking. That's what he says. Trans people and their allies are the Nazis. And the, the Nazis are coming after our kids. That's what he says. So he shows up on Jordan B. Peterson's uh, little podcast thing here. Wanted to listen to what they had to say to each other. Now, this isn't part one. If you didn't see the other, don't sweat it. This stands independently of the rest. I'll provide context if it's missing. While we listen, we're going to play some Final Fantasy VII for now. We're going to play some Mario 3 in a little while. I just wanted to level up some materia because I've never gotten like this, you know, never made it this far with my materia leveling before. So figured I might as well get some like, and you know what? Why not? We're going to beat the bosses, like, you know, the mega bosses, the ultimate weapons and stuff. We're going to beat Emerald Weapon, Ruby Weapon. And when we're done with that, we'll play some Mario. How about that? All right, let's listen to this nutter butter of epic proportions. See what he has to say to Eric Metaxas. <laughs> Another nutter butter of, ep of epic proportions. Leading up to this moment, I remember what he's talking about now. He said that he's talking about his new book that he wrote, Letter to the American Church. I am writing a counter book to it. I'm, it's the next book I'm writing. Um, I cannot resist. Letter to the American Church, a response. That's probably going to be the name or something to that effect. I'm not a creative fellow with the naming. But anyway, Letter to the American Church, the book that Eric Metaxas wrote, he claimed he was inspired by God to write it. And when asked to expand upon that a little bit by Jordan Peterson, he said, well, I mean, you know, I didn't like hear God's voice or whatever. Well, then what do you mean exactly? What does inspired by God mean precisely? If you didn't hear his voice, then how were you inspired? What was different about what you did than what anybody else does when they write a book? You know, there, there are people okay. I know who will hear the voice of God. They will hear God speak a sentence or... Sp no, no, nobody hears God do that. That is fictitious. But okay, people claim that. Sure, go on. Speak a scripture or something. Um, I'm not talking about that. Uh, that happens, okay. but that didn't happen to me. For me, it... No, it doesn't happen. And at least he's admitting that's not what happened in his book. Like when he when he wrote his book. At least he's admitting to that. Seriously, I took notes on his book because I really want this to be the like the next project I tackle as far as books go. And it was psychotic. Some of the stuff he said was psychotic. He said we live in a Nazi regime right now. Nazis have taken over. They control the government. They control everything. Nazis do. And he said... The Nazis are trans people, the LGBT people, BLM. They're the Nazis. That's what he said. I am not even joking. Hold on, let me find... Ch chapter 5, titled 12,000 Pastors. I, I'm just giving you guys what my notes say here. Churches don't realize... Is, I'm sorry. Churches don't realize the forces behind BLM and the rainbow flags are smiling because they deceived them. BLM slash LGBT community are like Nazis. Nobody dreamt of Hitler doing what he did. I guess the implication is nobody would dream that the LGBT community would do what they're doing. 
get help, Eric. I mean, uh, let's see. Some of the chapters were kind of boring. Chapter 6 didn't have anything of real value. Chapter 7 was boring. Chapter 8, boring. Chapter 9, The Idol of Evangelism is the title of this one. Jesus was insulting to the Pharisees. We should be insulting too. Insulting sometimes brings people to salvation. So as a man of God, you need to insult trans people. You need to attack them. You need to hurt them. You need to say things that wrecks them emotionally because that may or may not bring them to what you believe, to your side of Jesus or whatever. That's what I have written down in my notes here. I'm not joking. Jesus knocking over money changers was toxic masculinity. That's the no that's what he said. No. That's not what toxic masculinity is. You don't seem to understand what toxic masculinity is. Oh yeah, here here's another quote that I got from his book. He said, skinny jeans and smoke machines and celebrities in the green room. I don't, I don't know what that was in reference to. That's just something that he said. That's a quote from Greg Locke. He quoted Greg Locke there. That's weird, right? He didn't actually quote Greg Locke. He just, I mean, he didn't cite Greg. He just quoted him. That's really weird, right? People are looking to the church for answers to these subjects. We take our eyes off God if we capitulate to cancel culture. That's the kind of book we're dealing with, just so you know. A young man is confused about his sexuality, but he hears people say he should, em he should embrace being gay. Would we have spoken against slavery in 1850? Would we have spoken about Nazis in 1935? Why do we think we'd speak then? Why do we think we'd speak then if we don't now? That's what he said. And you know what? It's an interesting point. My eternal position on this subject is the church should not be involved in politics. Full stop. That's it. There are no ifs, ands, or buts to it. The church shouldn't be involved in politics, but should they have spoken out against slavery? In my opinion, the answer to that question is the church should stay out of politics. However, as human beings, as people, as members of a society, you should speak out against slavery or wrongs or whatever. Absolutely. But from the pulpit, should the pastor sway his congregation to vote a specific certain way because he doesn't like this thing or that thing? No. No, I don't care. There's no excuse for it. No. Absolutely not. Anyway, that's my, that's my position on the subject. Should we have spoken out against slavery in 1850? As an individual, yes. As a church, no. Tell me what you think about it. Like I said, I'm, I'm going to be writing a book about this. I'm going to write a book about this book that this guy wrote here to debunk all of the ridiculous, nonsensical garbage he put in it. But enough talking about the ridiculous, nonsensical garbage. Let's actually listen to the ridiculous, nonsensical garbage, and see what he said. Keep listening here. We are created in God's image, and inevitably, you, you can say this about the New Testament itself, about the New and Old Testaments. I mean, they're inspired, but Paul does not erase his personality to speak uh, for God. God. Uh, so he's saying, you can have your own personality. You don't have to become a non-political machine after becoming religious. You're absolutely 100% correct. Yes, absolutely. In fact, I would take it a step further. I'd say if you are a religious person, you should be involved in politics. But should your pastor be telling you what you should be doing or how you should be voting? Should your pastor be dictating to you the ways in which you should vote or how you should think? 
about political subjects. No. Religious subjects? I suppose, whatever, sure, I guess. Political subjects? Absolutely not. He's trying to obfuscate. He's trying to blur the line there. Erase his personality to speak uh, for God. God created Paul with his personality so that God could use the medium of the human being that is Paul to, to say what God has to say. So it's it's different from, you know, there, there are people okay. I know who will hear the voice of God. They will hear... See, that's the interviewer's little note to wrap it up. I have more things to say. FYI, if you're interviewing somebody, don't ever interrupt them, ever. Not even to acknowledge what they're saying. Don't say, okay. Keep your mouth completely shut. In fact, mute your mic until it's time to ask the next question. Acknowledging what they said or saying, okay, or, oh, yeah, I get that. Yeah, I understand. That's what you do in normal conversation. In an interview, it's distracting to the audience. Assuming Jordan Peterson is a professional interviewer, which I feel it's safe to assume, right? He probably knows that rule about interviewing. And this is most likely a hint to wrap it up so that I can say something. Um, you know, there, there are people okay. I know who will hear the voice of God. They will hear God speak a sentence or speak. A no, you don't know people who would do that. No. Scripture or something. Um, I'm not talking about that uh that happens okay. but that didn't happen to me for me that does not happen me and if you notice um peterson said okay again is he a bad interviewer and he's just like repeating okay 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 over and over again or is he trying to get a word in edgewise is that what's happening i can't tell talking about that uh that happens okay. but that didn't happen to me for me it was, and it's a funny thing. It's like developing a muscle where you become increasingly sensitive to, uh, you're able to use it. And, and I, well, I guess he's just a bad interviewer because the camera like switched over to Eric Metaxas here and he continued his thought. That's weird, right? I think l literally over the decades, I've become more sensitive to, um, to um in, in other words in the past i think wait in other words you didn't give us your first words uh you know i've uh, since i became a christian uh you know rather dramatic are you gonna get this out or not in uh, 1988 i have all I wanted every moment god to use me to to use me in my gifts uh uh, w which are strange and, and various. <laughs> and I, and I've always, uh, assumed that, that he would, and that he was doing that. And in the various books that I've written and the various things that I've done, even in the jokes that I've cracked that God is with me. But, um, th over the, uh, over the years, I've become a little bit more sensitive to these moments where, I feel, I would say, you know, God is particularly in this. I can sort of feel it. It's it's almost like a highlighter going over something. The the words are the same, but you, you can sort of see this highlighted. The text totally, totally is highlighted, or something like that. I don't mean that specifically with with my books. I'm I'm speaking about talking about my thoughts and things that I think that these these thoughts. Okay, he is all over the place. I don't know what the hell he's going on about right now. By the way, you may not know what I'm up to right now. Let me just explain what I'm doing. Um, there's this special thing in Final Fantasy VII called the 7777 what, rule. I don't know what it is. Where if you get your health to 7777, you will attack whatever it is as soon as the battle starts for 7,777 damage, and you'll do it 77 times before anybody takes a turn. So what I'm doing right now is I'm getting Cloud down to 7777 health through HP up materia and potions, and I'm going to enter a battle and go mini, and then I'm going to attack him. I'm going to put the enemy to sleep, and I'm going to attack him as a mini, 
until he gets down to 7-7. Seven, seven. That, that's what I need. The, the last two need to be 7-7. Seven, seven. And then I'm going to use potions to bring him up to 7-7-7-7. Seven, 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 seven. Save and go fight Emerald. So that's what I'm going to start right now. Uh, let's see if we can make it work. All right, let's keep listening to this guy ramble on about how he hears from God, but he doesn't actually hear from God secretly. Feel like God is uh, particularly behind them. Could I be vaguer? So, I'll try. Yeah, he's being vague and confusing and not making any sense at all. Like, I don't know what the hell you're going on about. No, 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 no. This is a hard thing to get right. So, you know, there's going to be some wandering about in the darkness trying to get it right. Oh, yeah, there you go. Okay, Jordan Peterson is, you know, throwing a life raft to his buddy here and uh, helping him <laughs> helping him out of a tough situation when he's not making any sense. I mean, one of the things I try to do when I'm speaking and also when I'm writing is to feel... I would I wouldn't use a visual metaphor. For me, it's more like feeling my way forward for toeholds. I the image that always comes to mind for me is walking across a swamp of dirty water where there's stone pathway underneath, yeah, and yeah, I can yeah. feel out with my feet if the next thing I'm standing on is well water or 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 crocodile or or solid ground. And I'm all dude. I'm just now realizing. Oh my god, this is so annoying. If I Okay. If I use mini on somebody, then it reverses the mini spell. That's very frustrating. Okay, whatever. Always searching for that sense of solidity. But it's to, interesting. There's a to, presupposition in what you're saying that there is... Dude, what the hell are these people talking about? I have no idea what they're saying right now. This is just nonsense, right? Are they saying anything that means anything at all right now? I don't understand. For solid ground, and I'm always searching for that sense of solidity. But it's to, interesting. There's a to, presupposition in what you're saying that there is a path forward. There's a right way and a yes. wrong way. And that's, that's a presupposition that you've just put out there. In other words, you operate with that yes. presupposition. There's such a thing as yeah, truth. Uh, and yes. I don't want to get... Uh, wow, there's such a thing as truth? No f***ing sh Knock me over with a feather, really. There's such a thing as truth? This is the first time hearing of it. What the hell are these two going on about? These are supposed to be thought leaders? I mean, seriously. What the hell is happening right now? Get it wrong. And that alone yes, is, right. is, a, is a big thing to, to put that out there. Right. Well, Not I would say, say that well, I have I agree, no idea I agree. whether well, that's truth. Right. Well, I think that's akin in some ways to, to, to your claim that you're, you're attempting to be directed by as close as you can manage to divine inspiration when you're writing. I mean, it is an, it is an a set of axiomatic statements. Like I do believe well, But that the, forgive me for interrupting. Dude, why does he use words that... People probably understand axioma axiomatic statements. Why is he using those words instead of just using words that everybody understands? Is he doing this because he wants to sound smart? Because he wants everybody to think that he's smart? Is that like the goal here? What? By the way, axiomatic, I don't want to get it wrong. But I be before looking it up, I think an axiomatic statement is just something that is like true by default it's just accepted to be true here's the definition in math and logic an axiomatic system is any set of primitive notions and axioms using the word in the definition fantastic that's great to logically derive theorems a the okay this isn't helpful at all all right define axiom a statement or proposition which is regarded as being established, accepted, or self-evidently true. So an axiom is just something that's accepted to be true. So what was that that he said about axiomatic statements, and why did he use that word? I, as close as you can manage to divine inspiration when you're writing. I mean, it is an, it is an a set of axiomatic statements, like I do believe well, But this, forgive me for interrupting, but... Like, what's an axiomatic statement? It's gonna, it's gonna sound yes. like I'm claiming that th that I'm being led by God and everything I write. I don't want to. Yeah, no, that's what he said. Yes, absolutely. 
I don't know if you guys were here for the previous one, if you were here for the previous part, but that is exactly what this dude said. I was inspired by God to write this book, Letter to the American Church, about how the church is capitulating to the Nazis and the Nazis are trans people and BLM. This is like, this is just, this is a joke. If this was not so sad, it would be funny. Say that. I'm just basically, I'm, I'm a writer. I'm a speaker. I do my best. The only time uh, I felt s something more palpable of, of... He's saying the only time he felt God inspire him to say something... God's inspiration was in writing a letter to the American church. Uh, oh, so now he's saying that he did feel inspiration from God to write this book. Why didn't you just say that? Why is he, like, walking on eggshells? Why don't you just come out and admit that you believe that you were inspired by God to write this or whatever? This dude is, this is, like, such a weasel way to do it, right? Why doesn't this guy just come out and say it instead of weaseling his way around the subject? I, I felt like th I've never written anything as as sobering and urgent. And so I had a more keen sense that I really need to get this right because what I'm saying is so serious. And mm, so serious. He wanted to make sure that you understood that Black Lives Matter is actually a Nazi cult, a Nazi movement that's trying, that the plan is to put Christians in gas chambers. I'm not even joking, by the way. You think I'm being hyperbolic? No. That was the, the whole point of the book. If we don't stop it now, the ultimate end is BLM is going to put Christians in gas chambers. Really. And that is the big revelation that this guy had to give us by, like, the end of the... Hell, halfway through the book. No, that's the begin. That's the premise of the book. The premise of the book is that that's going to happen to Christians if we don't do something to stop it. It's an embarrassment. And, and, and so urgent. Uh, so, but I don't want to imply that there was anything uh, m mystical about it or that every word was, uh, you know, t uh, chosen by God. But oh, I just had I suppose a there sense is, of humility. There is something. There oh, no, Jared, Jordan. So the writer says, no, I, I wasn't inspired by God. And Jordan Peterson is going to be like, no, no, yeah. You know, I think it's fair to say you were inspired by God. Like, what the hell are these two doing? It's like they're, I don't know how else to say it. I'm sorry. It's like they're yanking each other off over here. Like, come on. There is something, I suppose, mystical about that intuition that there's a distinction between words that are false and words that are true. What? So if you say something that's true, then it means that it's inspired by God. Is that what he is saying right now? Yeah. And it isn't easy exactly to describe how you know the difference. I mean, do you know the difference the way you know the difference between truth and falsehood if you do, in fact, know that difference and haven't clouded your mind up too bad? But it's no different than the instinct to know lies. what's... It, it, it's no different, really, than the instinct to know what's funny if you're a jokester, right. as, right, as I right. am, to know yeah. the time. Dude, these people are so painfully stupid. I just, like, I don't even know what to do with this. Ming of why would it be funnier if I hesitate, if I, if I, if I, if I, if I, if I stutter the phrase, uh, why will it be funnier, the, the, the timing, all those things are instincts that uh, we all develop in our various ways th through life, or at least I, that ideally we, that we would. So it, it has something to do with that. It becomes... Wait, so being inspired by God to write a book to the American church has something to do with being funny? Like, what the hell are you talking about right now?
it, it doesn't feel conscious. Uh, it, it, it feels like something that it's it's an inner knowing, a sense of of thing. In all seriousness, let me tell you what's happening right now. I've, I've been making jokes about this, but what's happening right now is Eric Metaxas is flopping around like a fish in this interview and doesn't know what to say or do or how to make it better or he, he doesn't even know what he's trying to communicate. And Jordan Peterson is desperately trying to help him get there. He's desperately trying to help him, like, figure out what he wants to communicate. Like, not only does he not have the words to communicate what he intends to communicate, he doesn't even know what he's trying to say. So, anyway, that's what's happening. We're watching Jordan Peterson try to bail this guy out when this guy doesn't even know what he's being bailed out of, honestly. Now, if you notice... Right now, Cloud has 6,987 HP, right? I need to get it down to 6,977. And then I'm going to use potions, probably nine potions or something, to get him up to 7777. And then I'm going to enter the battle with, uh, what's his name, with Emerald Weapon. That's not going to kill Emerald Weapon. That's just going to be the start of the battle. So anyway, let's keep listening. Things, but uh, I mean, I've I've had numerous genuinely mystical experiences, uh, miraculous experiences, um, but that's not what I'm talking about here. Here I'm talking about so like what are you talking about? Honestly, even Eric Metaxas doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. About just what it is to be a writer. Uh, but as I say, it kind of became pointed with Letter to the American Church because of the seriousness of what I was writing. Oh, so it sounds to me like Eric Metaxas is talking about just being a writer. It sounds, it sounds to me like he was just saying, no, I wasn't inspired by God to write this. I just wrote it. I just felt like I wanted to write it. It had nothing to do with it being inspired by God. That's what it sounds like to me. Great. Okay, well, at least we arrived there, right? It took us uh, six minutes of this interview to get there, but okay. Glad Eric Metaxas finally found what he was looking for. Okay, so clouds at 6977. Now let's arrange our items, find the potions. 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 7677, seven, seven, right? Now I'm going to save. And I'm going to get all my materia ready. I'm going to heal everybody up except for Cloud. And then I'm going to give Cloud that last potion. And then I'm going to enter the battle with Emerald Weapon. That's how we're going to win. All right, let's find it. There he is. That was easy. Here we go. Well, okay, so let's, let's turn to that now. Because of the seriousness of what you were writing, and you pointed specifically to the events of the last three years, and this is probably what'll get this whole discussion canceled on YouTube, by the way. Good. Oh, this whole thing's gonna be canceled on YouTube, by the way, yeah. They're such martyrs, really? Like, YouTube gives a shit about these two clowns. Nobody cares what you have to say, okay? You wanna say what you wanna say, then say it. I'm sitting here, I haven't even found anything of interest yet. Like, what's cancelable about what they've said? Nothing. Because that's Excellent. increasingly happening. Yeah, well, yeah. three. They've taken three of my videos down in the last month, by the oh, way. Oh, what a martyr. They've taken three of his videos down. Yeah, they took... Uh, they demonetized one of my videos very recently. Um, guess what, man? That's part of the game. That's part of the deal. That's how it works. Welcome to the club. Nobody likes how this works. That's what you agreed to when you signed up. YouTube tends to demonetize high performing videos and I had a video go viral recently and it had a picture of Saddam Hussein and it was like a historical thing and it showed some devastation that Saddam Hussein had wrought and they gave me that um they gave me the uh you know the old demonetize thing for that unfortunately that's just that's how the cookie crumbles sometimes that's how it rolls you know um, so, um, what is it exactly that you think is afoot? Why do you think it's akin to the sorts of things that were happening while the totalitarian state was rising in Germany? Why didn't he just say, 
why do you think it's similar to Nazi Germany? Why did he have to say, why do you think it's akin to, what was it he said? What is it exactly that you think is afoot? Why do you think it's akin to the sorts of things that were happening while the totalitarian state was rising in Germany? Why didn't he just say, why do you think it's similar to Nazi Germany? Why did he have to use so many words? Like, this frustrates the shit out of me. Speak like a human being, Jordan, okay? Please. And you've just, you've just said response- it. The U- YouTube canceling your, your conversations. Oh, because, yeah, Nazis famously liked to cancel people on YouTube. Totally. Absolutely. How extraordinarily preposterous and sick is that? It- you know, here's the thing. It, to take his argument seriously for a moment, I don't know why I would, but okay, let's, just for a second. I guess what he's trying to communicate here is YouTube uh, censoring, censoring videos, right? They're taking certain videos down and or demonetizing them or whatever. And I guess that's akin to book burning to some degree, right? You're burning books, you're preventing the flow of information or whatever, except you're not. Except you can write any book you would like to write. And as a matter of fact, this guy did. He wrote a book that he wanted to write and he published it and it got rave reviews. It got massive attention all over the place. Sure, yeah, YouTube... Uh, demonetized one of his videos. Great. That means he can't make money from one of his videos. You can still write any book that you want. You can write anything you want in that book. You know, I'm used to not using certain terms because, you know, I'm on YouTube and it's, um, it can be, oh my God, I'm about to die, aren't I? Am I, am I about to die? He's going to use Emerald Beam on me. Oh, uh, hackers. Okay, no, we're good. Some, when I'm on YouTube, I can't use certain words, like the R word when referring to being assaulted. That's not a monetizable word. So I avoid that word. I just say assaulted, attacked, that kind of thing. When I'm talking about what happens in schools with extreme nutcases who need mental help, who do absolutely crazy things, there we go. See, I beat Emerald Weapon just like that. All you got to do is set up the 7777 thing, and then Knights of the Round, and then mime, 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 mime. You just keep on miming, and you only need to cast it once. So there you go, 50,000 AP. Hades was born, Double Cut was born, Mime was born, Phoenix was born. Next one, Long Range, wow, everything is born. Something that I realized, it took me a while to realize when I was writing my book, owenmorgan.com slash book, by the by. Something it took me a while to realize is that I can say anything, anything that I want. I can swear up a storm if I choose. It doesn't matter what I want to say. I can say it in my book. Because books are much more open. They're much more free. They're much more... It's possible to say pretty much anything you want in a book, is the point. And you don't have to worry about being censored. You can self-publish. Self-publishing is easier than ever today. I'm doing it. So this whole, oh, YouTube censoring me thing, yeah, give me a break. I don't care. Thick is that. It's mind-bending that in the West, we would have some arbiters out there deciding what is okay and what is not okay that's despicable as speaking as an american it is okay there have always been arbiters out there who have decided what's appropriate for advertisers and what isn't you know certain advertisers decide by the way i'm going in and out of the gold saucer because there's a guy that appears in the top left there he is and you can buy gp from him and i need to buy gp i don't feel like getting it any other way anyway um back in the 80s before the internet was really anything special or important or relevant at all 
I was a kid in the 90s, okay? The 1990s. I remember going to a supermarket and checking out with my mom at, at the register and seeing this little uh, magazine. I think it's the Daily Inquirer or something like that. I forget what it was called. And it would say things like, Hillary Clinton sleeps with Bat Boy or Bat Boy strikes again or whatever. It would say just fake, ridiculous nonsense. Obviously fake. Nobody had, no advertiser had an obligation to advertise with those people, with that magazine. They could choose to advertise with them or not. You know, I get emails right now, every day, from people who want to advertise with me, like who want to do sponsorships with me or whatever. But I don't get offers from others. You know, NordVPN has specifically told me that I am... Wait, I have the email. Let me find the email from NordVPN, told you, tell you exactly what they said to me. Unfortunately, your channel does not comply with our minimum requirements or is not in, a, in an appropriate sphere to get the partnership approved. Not good enough or not interesting enough or not valuable enough or whatever. That's what NordVPN said. Guess what? NordVPN can say that if they choose. They aren't obligated to to work with me if they don't want to. Nobody is obligated to work with me. They're not canceling me by not working with me. I do, however, get just an obscene amount of offers from diet pill companies, vital force and supplement companies and all this other garbage. I get this stuff constantly, honestly, from supplement companies. And every single time, I ignore it. Or one of these days, I'd like to go through all the supplement companies that I get offers from, just, just for laughs. But the point is that no one has an obligation to advertise with me. And I have no obligation to advertise with them, either. That's not the same as canceling. That's not what canceling is. I have a right to write a book and say whatever the hell I want in that book. And guess what? I did. And so did Eric Metaxas, as a matter of fact. So get over yourself. You're not being canceled. You know what the Nazis did in Germany? They didn't pull advertisers from Eric Metaxas. They burned books and banned them. So this book is not appropriate to be in our classrooms or in our libraries or in our whatevers, and they burned them. But yeah, totally, Eric Metaxas is being persecuted because advertisers don't think that they don't want to work with him anymore, totally, yeah. And I'm being persecuted because NordVPN doesn't want to work with me. Guess what? It makes them a scumbag company. It doesn't make them persecutors. Jesus, dude. Profoundly anti-American. I think of the blood of patriots who died for freedom. Yeah, blood of patriots died for freedom so that you have the right to uh, advertise with whoever you want. Right. Totally. For freedom of speech. So it is, on the one hand, deeply offensive to me in that way. but He's offended, people. As a human being, it's deeply offensive to me. Uh, Offended! As a Christian, it's offensive to me because I believe that we are all... Well, listen to this snowflake over here. He's so offended by everything. God. Even I'm not that offended by stuff. Jeez. Pull it together, bro. It's this is coming from an SJW, okay? Stop being so offended all the time. Offensive to me because... I believe that we are all free to speak truth. So the idea that we would be alive at a time in the West, where in places like Canada and America and the West, somebody would dare, would dare to be shutting down what you and I and most people know are perfectly 
wonderful conversations. We know they're perfectly wonderful conversations to talk about how Jews may or may not be trying to take over the world or to talk about how people are trying to manipulate you or, or how trans people are really Nazis. Uh, yeah, 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 totally. To just nice conversations, right? And I can't have them. Oh, except I can have them because I'm talking about it like right now, like as we speak, like right now I'm saying it. And also I wrote about it in my book, which is what I'm telling you about. The book that I wrote where I called these people Nazis. This guy is such a martyr, it's obscene. Get over yourself, Eric. It's embarrassing at this point. Are perfectly wonderful conversations. We know that it's not like, well, yeah, I guess they had a point. They had less than no point. Who is they exactly? And by my show, the Eric Metaxas show, what oh, self plug was flourishing on YouTube, uh, getting more and more subscribers. I'm very eclectic, so uh, I'm you know some of it is comedy, some of it is serious discussions about faith, some of it is politics, some of it is I'm interviewing. Uh, it, but it's all garbage, every last bit of it. Uh, uh, authors about their books. Two years ago, I dared to have Naomi Wolf, who was one of my classmates at Yale. Wow, that's daring. Uh, liberal feminist. I had her on the show. I interviewed to her. Talk, yeah. To yeah. talk about, I know, yeah, to talk about. Yeah. Uh, let me guess. She's a liberal, or she was a liberal feminist, and now she's like a full-blown Nazi, like an actual real Nazi who believes that, like, the Jews are trying to run the world. Am I in the ballpark? I'm not even sure. I don't know who this person is. Vaccine. Ma I didn't even choose the subject. I had a few other people on the show to talk about some things, but the show was not focused, you know, on, on those kinds of things. But you two yeah. wiped my program out completely. Didn't just d take some videos down, wiped the entire program, the Eric Metaxas show, ceased to exist on YouTube, and I thought to myself, if you're standing back objectively looking at the situation, you'd say, well, that's interesting. Why would they do that? Uh, in other words, they, who's this they you're talking about? Some ambiguous authority that's out there to get you, right? I wonder who, who they is. Well, for what it's worth, all the way back then, like when COVID was going on, there was rampant misinformation taking place and for the safety of society, it was in everybody's best interest that social media companies choose to remove the conversation completely. Like, don't even bring it up. Don't bother. It's not something that we should be discussing on social media. You should be looking to experts for answers on this stuff. And... People wrote books about it. Experts wrote books about it. And also, you know who else wrote books about it? People like Eric Metaxas did. Nutcases wrote books about it too. Everyone was always free to write books about this stuff to their heart's content. Oh, and by the way, there were never, at any point, ever, any vaccine mandates. Nobody was ever mandated to get a vaccine. If you didn't want to get vaccinated, then you could optionally take a COVID test every week. That was part of the bill that was passed, like the executive order that Biden signed. It wasn't a vaccine mandate. It was a testing mandate that could be um, that you could be exempted from by getting vaccinated. So I don't want to hear any of this ridiculous nonsensical vaccine mandate garbage. And I don't want to hear any of this, oh, I'm not allowed to talk about it garbage. Then how could he have possibly published the book that he published about being persecuted for having to, you know, the vaccine mandates? I would bet money that this guy, Eric Metaxas, did not get a vaccine. Tell me, how do vaccine mandates work if people don't get vaccines? Interesting, huh? 
by the by, I just changed things up. Want to let you know. A couple of quick announcements. Just take me less than 20 seconds, okay? My li- the, the little thing that I just did to explain how long it was going to take, that took longer than the announcement that I'm going to give you. Buy my book, owenmorgan.com slash book. Give it a look. I would appreciate that. Also, on my main channel, Owen Morgan Telltale, you can now become a member and gain early access to um, episodes of my shows. Like, I've set it up so that if you're a patron or you're a member, both can gain access to episodes, honestly, long before they release, like a week or more. So check that out. You want to be a member, you can gain access to it. Anyway, let's keep listening to this poor persecuted man who didn't do anything to anybody. He's just trying to call out the vaccine mandates. <laughs> this is not, uh, this doesn't look good for the people at YouTube. They look like fascists. They are acting in a fascist way. They are globalists. They are. Is that so? Okay. Uh, cultural Marxists, but of course there's a good dose of fascism in there. They don't believe in freedom. They don't believe in free speech. They have an agenda and they have tremendous... Well, guess what? It's a private company. Yes, they are. They do have their own agenda. They can do or say whatever they want because it's a private company. And that private company has a leader and that leader can make any decision he wants. You are free to stand on a street corner and screech about whatever stupid garbage you want or write a book and publish it if you would like. Again, self-publishing is easier than ever. I did it. And so did he. He published his own book about it too. So I don't want to hear any of this ridiculous persecution nonsense. This power which they are now using because as we all know, they are scared to death. Who is they, by the way? Of the truth. They are so scared that they're willing to look like the monsters that they are because they have nothing left to lose. So when- and, and what's the truth? And who is they? And what kind of monsters are they exactly? If you notice along the bottom here, it says, those who arbitrate our speech and thought. They put in like, uh, what do you call Like little- um, they put in markers to explain what they're talking about at different points. Let's see. What do the markers say? Usually they put them in the description, right? Oh, look. This guy is sponsored by ExpressVPN. How about that? In all fairness, I've been sponsored by Surfshark VPN before twice. Yeah, here you go. Here are all of the ridiculous uh, markers that they put in. Those who arbitrate our speech and thought. That's the one we're on now. Next is takedowns on YouTube and RFK Jr. Oh, it's getting into some vaccination stuff. Is there any, like, is anyone detecting irony in the fact that these people are saying this stuff on YouTube right now? They're talking about this on YouTube? Anybody else think that's a little, like, <laughs> ironic? we say what are the parallels to, to germany in the 30s you don't suppose that in 1933 most people knew what was coming nobody could have dreamt of the no people knew what was what was coming in 1933 people saw what hitler and what the nazi party was like in 1933 and the reason i say that i have evidence let me show you in 1945 i think maybe after the war there was an anti fascism uh, i guess you call it there was an anti-fascism film released by the u.s military i think war department education film i think it was produced between 1942 and 1948 i think it's called don't be a sucker right and uh the premise is this guy is an american and he's walking down the street and he hears somebody talking. He comes up to a crowd. Here's this guy here talking to people. And he's using interesting populist language. And he kind of agrees with it. Well, this guy right here is Hungarian. 
and he recognizes it. He's like, I've heard this before. This is familiar from 1932. Now, let's just listen for a second. Not going to listen to like not going to watch the whole film. I have watched the whole film and reviewed the whole thing on my main channel before. Owen Morgan Telltale, if you want to see the whole breakdown. I think it's called like everybody should see this film or something like that. But just search for don't be a sucker, Owen Morgan, and it should pop up. But anyway, let's just watch from here for just a minute. And you'll get an idea of what was going on in 1932, okay? Nights, figuring out how to take that away from him. I want to give you the truth, folks. The truth about America. I know you've got a lot of questions. You want to know why you're not getting the breaks you deserve? Well, I'm not a politician, but I've made it my business to study these things, and I happen to know the facts. This is called populist language, by the way. I'm not a politician. He wants to make everybody believe that he's different from all those other evil guys. Uh, But I happen to know what's happening. I happen to know what people are up to secretly. My friends, I'm just an average American. But I'm an American American. And some of the things I see in this country of ours make my blood boil. Now, the next thing he's going to do is pick out some minority group and blame them for everything that's happening. I see people with foreign accents making all the money. I see Negroes holding jobs that belong to me and you. Now, I ask you, if we allow this thing to go on, what's going to become of us real Americans? Now, I- I've heard this. I mean, you're catching this, right? He picked out some... Uh, some what do you call it like some minority groups and blamed them for everything that was happening uh i see people with foreign accents making all the money i see negroes making money that belongs to me and you he's picking out minority groups and blaming them for all of his problems that is what was happening in 1932 germany kind of talk before but i never expected to hear it in america this fellow seems to know what he's talking about. Yes, he knows all right. Take it away from him. What's the answer? What are we real Americans going to do about it? You'll find it right here in this little pamphlet. The truth about Negroes and foreigners. The truth about the Catholic Church. Now, friends, these books are free. Paid for by real Americans who want others to know the truth. Excuse me, young man, but are you actually going to read that stuff? Sure, why not? You heard what he said. Yes, I heard. Do you believe in that kind of talk? I don't know. Makes pretty good sense to me. I'm speaking to you as an American American. I used resist on Final Fantasy VII, and it's now preventing... It didn't prevent me from being mini, minified or whatever. It prevented me from fixing mini. Resist is worthless. Okay, let's keep listening. Sorry. You mean that kind of talk? I don't know. Makes pretty good sense to me. I'm speaking to you as an American American. And I tell you, friends, we'll never be able to call this country our own until it's a country without. Without what? Yeah, without what? Without Negroes. Without alien foreigners. Without Catholics. I mean, this is disturbingly similar to what we've heard even recently, right? It's weird how similar it is. That's because this is populism. This is populist language. This is how populists talk. It's fascism. Pick out an enemy that you don't like and blame everything on them. Without what? Yeah, without what? Without Negroes. Without alien foreigners. Without Catholics. Without gay people, without alien, without illegal aliens, right? I mean, Catholics are now at least partially part of the evangelical voting bloc, so they're not as demonized as they used to be back then. But this guy explains, this guy on the right, explains what he saw in Germany in 1932, what was happening at the time. Or just keep just watch from this point. It happened. I saw it first in Berlin in 1932. 
five young men that I knew were standing in the crowd listening to the Nazi speaker. Eric was a Catholic. Anton, a student of mine, was a Jew. Heinrich owned a small hardware store. Karl was a farmer. And Hans was an unemployed metal worker. To all true Aryan Germans, I say it is time you inherited the nation which rightfully belongs to you. To you alone belongs the glorious destiny of the greater Germany. The Nazi party will provide land for the farmer, work for the worker, and profits for the small businessmen. I mean, not for nothing. I just want to point something interesting out. But after World War I, I was reading this book about what drove people to this position, to Nazi Germany, you know, to do like what they're doing here. And um, it was largely the sanctions that they faced from World War One. They were like, it just, they were being drained of their resources and, and treated terribly and everything. And they had nothing. Basically, after World War One, everybody lost their jobs and they they had to survive off their savings. And after like six months of that, savings dried up they had nothing left and that was that was it you know people were suffering terribly and my first thought when reading this is like holy shit these people had savings if it's assumed that these people had savings like i don't i feel like it, it says something about our economy compared to the post-world war one economy right in all fairness two million people starved to death so not everybody had savings. Megan, thank you so much for ordering. I appreciate that. Glad that you're excited for the book. As excited as I am, ex I'm glad that you are as excited to read it as I am to release it. That is really fantastic. Keep listening to this. The, the point here, though, is there's an interesting kind of juxtaposition between the two economies. Not saying... Germany's was better back then or ours is better now or I'm not saying any of that stuff all I'm saying is it's an interesting comparison to make for one thing and for another thing the bad financial positions that people were in at the time in World War One after World War One in Germany led to this this is the result of bad financial conditions for people. ...nation which rightfully belongs to you. To you alone belongs the glorious destiny of the greater Germany. The Nazi party will provide land for the farmer, work for the worker, and profits for the small businessmen. Who is getting these things now? The Jew. You know, you promise that people's lives will be fixed and point a finger at somebody who you can blame for the problems, anybody, will, people will listen to you. They'll come to you in droves. That's why Trump was so popular. That's why Hitler was so popular, the Nazi party generally. And that's why fascism, extremism, that's why far-right ideology is so popular throughout the world. The Jew who has stolen our nation and our birthright. Who makes all the money and takes all our jobs? The Jew! He must be shunned. He must be ostracized. He must be eliminated. And the Catholics. We don't want our great nation run by a foreign church. We just... Well, I think at the time, actually, Catholics were... They were on, on tenuous ground with the Nazi party. They were... They had a, an uneasy an alliance. Uh, in 1932, they may have not had that alliance yet. Um, the Catholics were allowed to exist within Germany for a short time. And, and as a matter of fact, the Catholic Church convinced Hitler to ban Jehovah's Witnesses because Jehovah's Witnesses spoke out against Catholics so vehemently, said that they're evil and wrong and causing problems and blah, 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 which led to the second president of Jehovah's Witnesses writing a letter to Hitler 
and telling him that he, he agreed with his ideals about and he thought the Jews were really bad. I mean, it's called the letter to Hitler. We have a copy of it today. And if you want to read more about it, check my book. I wrote about it at length in my book. It's fascinating, actually. Anyway, the Catholic Church was on okay terms for a while until the day that they were not on okay terms until a certain specific Sunday. I forget what, what, like what, there's a name for the day that this happened, but the Catholic church being international as it was wrote a uh, pamphlet basically that was to be read out to every Catholic church every Catholic congregation, the same Sunday morning. And it was basically condemning what the Nazis were doing. It was saying, we are standing against the Nazis now. And uh, Hitler did not like that. Oh, boy. The Nazis raided, you know, Catholic churches, and they trashed them and... scattered their documents and killed people and whole bunch of stuff. It was it was ugly. Um they finally took their stand against the Nazis, I think in the late thirties. Maybe it was the late thirties. Anyway, uh up until that moment they pretty much, you know, stood with them. I didn't know you could get trine here. Interesting. Germans will know what to do with these people when the time comes. They and their faith must be destroyed. Then there are the Freemasons. In Germany, we have no place for secret societies. There may be only one society, and that is the Nazi party. There may be no secrecy about that in the new greater Germany. One by one, he attacked each minority and he split them off one from the other. These men were all fellow Germans when they came here today. Now they were split into rival groups, suspicious of each other, hating each other. They were being swindled, all of them. But the man who was really being fooled was Hans. He was pure German, according to Nazi standards. An Aryan, if you will. To him, they promised everything, and he fell for it. You who are true Aryan Germans, They share the glorious destiny of our fatherland. You are the pure-blooded, the master race. It is your divine right to rule, and the Nazi party stands ready to put you into power. It is for you to command all Germany, and someday, the entire world. So, yeah, um, this guy who was out of work, who had nothing, who was apparently living off of savings. I don't know where the hell he got those savings. I don't have any savings. He suddenly felt important and special and big and powerful, right? Because the Nazis made him feel that way. That's how Hans became a superman. They gave him a uniform and they pumped up his ego. He wasn't just a little fellow out of work anymore. He was a member of the master race. His wife couldn't quite understand. Even though he was a superman, there wasn't any food in the house. Stupid woman. Didn't she realize that the Nazis were going to make jobs for everybody? There would be plenty of food and clothing and a new house. Everything they wanted. The glorious future of Germany was to be theirs. I, just like Donald Trump, he promises everything to people, right? I'm going to make America great again. I'm going to bring jobs back to here. I'm going to fix it all. I'm going to make it all better. And I'm going to blame all of our problems on others. I'm going to blame, um, I don't know. I'm going to blame trans people for our problems. I'm going to blame Mexicans for our problems. Illegal immigrants, you know. Ever notice when he talks about illegal immigrants, it's never... Europeans who came here on a visa and overstayed that visa. It's always refugees who crossed the border to make their way to a legal refugee asylum-seeking center, a UN asylum-seeking center. It's always them that, that are the problem that he talks about. Ever notice that? 
as Falcone says, promise everything, deliver nothing. That's what it's about. So uh, that's real. I mean, if you want to see the whole thing, you can watch the whole thing on my channel. That's where I want to draw it with it. But the point is that populists have always operated this way. This is not new. What we're listening to here. This is not a new strategy. Say, what are the parallels to, to Germany in the 30s? You don't suppose that in 1933, most people knew what was coming. Nobody could have dreamt of the death camps. I mean, they didn't... Uh, dis okay, maybe they couldn't have dreamt of the death camps, but they saw people being segregated and separated into um, different groups and demonized i saw groups of people being demonized and there was some pretty violent rhetoric going around too at the time um some people did see what was coming some people did know what hitler had in mind for people i just find it interesting that this guy doesn't seem to like understand that or doesn't want to recognize it i don't know